Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How are you all doing? Welcome back to some more Football Manager 2016. We're playing as Leicester City. This is Season 2, Episode 1. Now guys, in today's episode, we have a match against Real Madrid, Sergio Ramos's testimonial. It is a friendly at the Santiago Bernabeu, and we're going to skip the Community Shield against Arsenal because I don't care about it and we're going to be playing the first match of Season 2 in the Premier League against West Ham. Guys, if this video can hit 150 likes, yes, 150 likes within 24 hours, I will do a double upload here today and release the second episode of Season 2 of my Football Manager uh, career playing as Leicester. I'm also going to be recapping the transfers. We also have Champions League football uh, in this season. So if you haven't gone and watched the last episode of Season 1, we managed to win the Premier League on the smallest of margins. It was right down to the last day. We had to beat Liverpool and Arsenal to win, had to beat Chelsea at home, and they lost. Mind you, they did have five or six players out, and uh, we won by the smallest smallest of margins and also we have Champions League football so there's a lot of stuff to recap it is currently the 3rd of August 2016 and I have skipped the transfer negotiations and I have had some pretty big problems with it but we've got some interesting players that I'd like to show you as well but uh, I, there's so much tedious stuff in Football Manager and these videos already go for 20 to 30 minutes usually this one might go for a little bit longer so I do hope you understand so we have a match against Real Madrid in today's episode Sergio Ramos actually invited us to play in his testimonial match which is awesome so we're going to be playing down at the Santiago Bernabeu against Real Madrid I could not uh, miss an opportunity to play against Real Madrid at the Santiago Bernabeu and I'm sure most of the Leicester City players uh, wouldn't as well and then we've got the match against West Ham there's also some other inbox stuff I'd like to show you but now in the Premier League this season Leeds got promoted along with Sheffield Wednesday and uh, Nottingham Forest I really do like that Sheffield Wednesday got promoted now can I see League 2 I'm not entirely sure However, I, I, I don't, won't worry about it. Oh, hang on, no. Go back to this. I can go last season. Here we go. So, Sunderland, Aston Villa, and West Brom got relegated. Pretty controversial. This is the league. We managed to win by three points. Arsenal, Liverpool, Manchester United, Manchester City, Tottenham. Uh, sorry, uh, Chelsea, Tottenham. Watford finished eighth. It's a pretty interesting league table. So, now, after the abundance of cash that we got in, we don't have much now. Seven million in transfer budget. And we have 100,000 in wage. So I need to bring in some new players. So these are the transfer players I brought in. I brought in Marcus Rojo from Manchester United for 33 million. He's worth 45, 26 years of age. We managed to bring in Mika Richards, 22 million. He's worth 30. And we managed to bring in Sado Barahino for 35 million. He's, war he's worth 46. At the start of career mode when I started, he was worth... Um, 50, 55 million off the top of my head. We also b managed to bring in two free transfers. I'm absolutely over the moon and rapt about getting Wellington Silva, 23 years of age, uh, worth 16 million, was left. Um, he was released by Arsenal, haven't, hasn't even played a senior game for them. And we managed to get Sammy, Abio, Sammy Amiobi, 24 years of age, 11 million, was released from Newcastle. So two free transfers, which I think are really quite good. I will go in depth and explain why I got these players in a minute, but let's go for the players that have been released. I managed to sell Richie to Aston Villa for 7 million, 27 years of age. We needed a new right back and some funds. We managed to sell Andy King for Southampton. We already have an abundance of midfielders, 27 years of age. He's going to be going down in stats, and he's okay. Shinji Okazaki. Uh, obviously, didn't get in much into the first team in the last season. We sold him to Montpellier for $5 million. Um, what else? We managed to sell Liam Moore, Ben Hammer. Um, Kramich went out on loan. I did try to sell him, 25 years of age, $17 million, million the Croat. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Okay, we spent just shy of 90 million and we managed to sell 200, sorry, 24 million. So, now you might be wondering, CMC, why did you go for Marcus Rojo? He's okay, but the difficulty I had with this Leicester City 
career mode. The amount of players that I negotiated with and the club signed, I went for, I actually wrote down who I went for. These are just some of the ones that I went for. So I needed a new right back and centre back. I went for Stone, Smalling, Sarko, Jones, Laporte, Umtiti, just to name a few. All the clubs accepted the contract, but because Leicester aren't very prestigious uh, in the game yet, we did win the, I, I thought, like, Reputation 4. We managed to win the Premier League last season and have Champions League football, but it was so hard to bring in players. So, Smalling and Jones accepted, uh, Manchester United accepted the bid, but we just couldn't bring them in. So I went for their third choice right back, Marcus Rojo, 26 years of age, has Premier League experience. Also, strikers-wise, um, sorry, right-backs-wise, I went for Nathaniel Klein, Walker, Bellerin. Most of these guys, um, like the, the clubs, accepted the contracts. Went for Harry Kane, Lukaku as well. But it was very hard to sign players that are already at Premier League clubs. So that's why I went for, obviously, Marcus Rojo, who was the third choice at Manchester United. Now, interestingly enough, with Mika Richards and Sado Barahino, Aston Villa have been relegated to League 2, so I managed to pick him up for $22 million. So that's pretty cheap, I think, seeing as he can play right and centre-back. 28 years of age, is a little bit past it, but he has um, um, league experience, um, and he's worth $30 million. But I think Sato Barahino is an awesome signing. $35 million we paid for him, so that's roughly around about, what, 12 15 million pounds So not much. He's worth 46 22 years of age. And uh, is now at Leicester. So, so far I blabbled on it a little bit. I want to recap as to where we are. Sorry about that one, guys. I got interrupted. But as you see on screen, the email that I was trying to find was Juventus FC offered me a job interview for winning the league with Leicester. Now, I was sort of umming and ahhing whether or not to accept it or not. However, I want to stay with Leicester. We won the Premier League and we have Champions League football. And in the end, they managed to re-sign uh, Kante. Um, Antonio Kante. So, that's pretty... Cool. Uh, Juventus also inquired about Mares. Uh, what else was there? I just want to show you the email for Ramos. Uh, it's not there anymore then. Okay, it's gone. No matter. Right, now let's quickly go into competition. We'll go and quickly have a look at our player stats and we'll go into transfers because I want to show you the, the transfers that have happened around the world. So, let's... Start with um, the fee. So, a couple of big transfers in this August window. Higuain left Napoli to join Manchester United. Morata left Juventus to join uh, Manchester United. Laporte joined Liverpool. Dominic Berardi joined Chelsea. Uh, Perez joined PSG. McCarthy joined Manchester City. So, a lot of players making... The cross over the pond, okay. Kevin Voland joined Chelsea as well. So you're most welcome to pause and have a look at the transfers here. There is a a lot of them. Remy Cabella joined Marseille. Very, very uh, interesting. Jesse Lingard left Manchester United to join Sheffield Wednesday. So that's pretty much it. All I'm going to be needing to recap. Let me know in the comment section down below your predictions for the season. Um, the board want me to qualify for Champions League again. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. It's going to be interesting to see how we do in the league. They want me to reach the first knockout round. They want me to get past the group. They want me to uh, finish in the... reach the semi-final of the FA Cup and the Capital One, and they don't care about the Community Shield. Now, did I win... Yes, I won the FA Cup last year as well. Yeah, we won the treble. That's what I thought. Well, no, we won the double, rather said. We didn't have any European football. Yeah, I was thinking, what? No, no I didn't. I won the double. But Watford won the... the Capital One Cup. So, throughout this season, tactics-wise, we're going to be playing our 4-4-2. Four, four, Jose Mourinho's 5-2-3-1, heavily inspired. Uh, park the bus tactic. And this is called Classic United, which I made. It's a hybrid between Ranieri's 4-4-2 and Sir Alex Ferguson's 4-4-2. It's a very flexible shape, and the mentality is control. So, we have Schmeichel in goal. We have 
Mika Richards as right back. We have Wes Morgan as our centre back. Probably would like to bring in another centre back. Uh, Marcus Rojo as well, partnering with him. We have Fuchs there as well. I did have to strengthen my backline because he's getting a little bit lo uh, um, older. So we have Schlup, Kante, Drinkwater, and Mares in the midfield. Jamie Vardy and Remy leading the line. So we have Mark Schwartz, Barahino on the bench. Whether or not he's going to play more in the English Premier League, we might give Remy more European sort of football. We will see. We have Daniel Amati on the bench. Wellington Silva, Danny Simpson, Robert Huth Gray, Jason Dodu, Al Brighton, Maddie James, and Sammy Ami Obi. Um, and obviously we have Cramage, Tom Lawrence on loan. That is pretty much it. Now, just before we get into the match against Real Madrid, I just forgot to uh, show you guys the managers of the Premier League. There has been some changes. So, Rafa Benitez is currently the manager at Arsenal. Arsene Wenger has been let go. And in this save, obviously, he didn't join Newcastle. So... Rafa Benitez is at Arsenal. Um, let's actually go the other way here. Right. Bournemouth still have Eddie Howe. Mark Hughes, the former Stoke manager, is at Chelsea, which is pretty interesting to see. Any other changes? There's a job advert at Everton. Uh, Stephen Evans is at Leeds. Jurgen Klopp is still at Liverpool. Now, the two Manchester clubs have the managers you would think. Pep Guardiola has signed for Manchester City. So it's going to be interesting to see how well I do against Rafa Benitez, Jose Mourinho, and uh, Pep Guardiola in league. So Jose is currently the manager of Manchester United. Steve McLaren is still at Newcastle. Alex Neal is still at Norwich. Carlos is at Sheffield Wednesday. David Moyes. Moisey is at Southampton. Tony Pulis is at Stoke. Nigel Pearson's at Swansea. Uh, Pochettino is still at Tottenham. Slavin Bilic is still at West Ham, and that's pretty much it. So let's get into the match against Real Madrid. We're still playing the 4-4-2. It's going to be very interesting to see how we play against them. We're going to be playing our strongest side. So Kante is currently on international loan, so he's not... How much did we miss out on for the 8th or the 21st? So he's still actually quite away. So we need to replace him. So should I bring in Daniel Amati in the midfield or Matty James? Let's bring in Daniel Amati. He played well this season. We'll make him as a ball winner in the midfield. And we'll leave it at that. So let's play the match against Real Madrid here today. And uh, hopefully we can have a good and fair game. Yeah, I understand that Kante can't go. Do I have to move him somewhere? Okay, what I'm going to have to do is, is I'm going to have to quickly bring up two players from our under-21s just to the senior team. Because we haven't actually got enough to put him out, and I don't want to promote him to demor de to uh, demoralise his morale by dropping him to the under twenty ones. That's a little bit st stupid. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so I want to read the odds and sort of stuff. I'm going to be interested to see who Real Madrid are playing. So Real Madrid are the favourites, four to six. A draw, nine to four. Leicester seven to. I can see Real Madrid edging this, but it'll be tough. Leicester won't roll over. The absence of Kante will also hit Leicester hard. Yeah, him dominating the midfield. And also, uh, Chiellini for Juventus he is having their testimonial. So, wow. Uh, um, Real Madrid are playing a 4-1-2-3. Incredibly interesting. So, they've got Nabel Fekir, formerly from Olympic Lyon, okay, leading the line. They've got Enzo Zidane, um, Zidane's, uh, Zidane's son. They've got Ozil. Pardon? Is he on loan? They must have Ozil on loan. 27 years of age, worth 111 million. Plays for Arsenal. What? I'm so. I guess they have him on loan. Cruz, Casemiro, Sergio Ramos, Cohen Trow, Varane are below and Castilla. So they're not playing their strongest side. They have Nani. That no, it's a different Nani. Um, who else? Vasquez, Calvajal, Alessandro, Bellarami, Karim. Okay, Kovacic. But uh, let's get into this match. Hopefully, we can prevail on the day. Now, how's this sort of stuff looking? Right, that's fine. Right, let's get into the match against Real Madrid, guys. 
And uh, hopefully we can bag a, a goal or two. I will be uh, playing uh, uh, Sado Barahino. I might even give Wellington Silva a run. So Marty on the ball finds Jamie Vardy breaking away. Jamie Vardy at the Santiago Bernabeu sprays it wide. I couldn't not let the boys not play at the Santiago Bernabeu. It's going to be a huge sort of it's 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 a good sort of practice for European football. And Schlup makes it one nil against Real Madrid. Nicely done there. Schlup finds Mares and Mares pays him back kindly with a pretty gifted goal there across the face. And we're one new up against Real Madrid. Now, because this is a friendly, we have a unlimited number of substitutes. We're not doing well with possession, but we're one nil up against Real Madrid. Mika Richards finds oh my god, Remy! Jamie Vardy makes it 2 0 and we're beating Real Madrid 2 0. Obviously you're going to have to be pretty composed in the European stage. But at the Santiago Bernabeu, probably facing 80,000 people is a good idea for some of these youngsters. Wes Brown is... Uh, sorry, Wes Morgan is still the captain. But we're 2-0 up against Real Madrid. Mind you, they're not playing their strongest side. There's no Gareth Bale. There's no Ronaldo. We are. Mara is over the top to Remy. Sergio Ramos back. Daniel Amati on the ball. Finds Mares. Mares oh, finds Remy. Jamie Vardy trying to clean up the scraps, but to no avail. Oh, Mares back to Fuchs. And we're 2 nil up against Real Madrid. Riyad Mares and Remy picking up two assists. And Schlup and Jamie Vardy with the goal. Fuchs finds Schlup. Jamie Vardy running back. We might do some substitutions at half time. We'll, we'll see. Jamie Vardy on the ball. Oh, Daniel Amadi tackle, but yeah, Urza, they must have him on loan or they've signed him. That's interesting to see. Oh, they might have some sort of buyback clause, I'm not entirely sure. Schlup plays it back to Fuchs. Schlup again finds Riyad Mahrez. He makes it 3-0 against Real Madrid. My God, they really shouldn't be 3-0 down. But mind you, we are, they are versing the current England champions. <laughs> they're not playing Navas in goal, they're playing Casilla. But it's great to be 3-0 up against Real Madrid, beating them at the Santiago Bernabeu. Two minutes of added time. We still have seven, in, 7 million in the bank, so let me know in the comment section down below players you'd like me to sign. But it's very difficult for me, um, because no clubs want to sell me their players. There, will be, there would have been no way we would have been able to sign Sato Barahino or Rick, uh, Mika Richards if they didn't get relegated from their respected clubs, West Brom and Aston Villa. Because they got relegated, they were going to be in League 2. And they don't want that, of course. Right. I said at the 60th minute, I'll do a substitution. Let's do one now. So, who do we have at our disposal? We can bring on Sato Barahino. But I really do like Remy and Vardy leading the line. But we're going to have to play him. I don't want him to get angry and want to leave. But I definitely can see him as the future of the club. Remy is 29 years of age. And Vardy's, what, 29 as well. So, they are getting a little bit past it. So... Let's bring on Sato Barahino for, just on principle, who's playing worst? Remy is. And Remy's the the uh, the person with the most attrition. Uh, sorry, Jamie Vardy has the less sort of health uh, condition, fitness. Um, we can put him as a poacher. We can put him in as an advanced forward. Let's put him as an advanced forward. Right, Wellington Silva will bring on... I don't really know. Danny Simpson can come... No. Gray can come on for Schlup. Who else do we have? Silva, we can... No, I want to leave on Mares. We'll take off drink water for Matty James. I do want to give everyone a bit of a run into the side. Huth can come on for Wes Morgan. Um, I do want to leave a fair. I do want to leave a fair few players on. Or should I bring on Wellington Silver for Mares? Go with sort of a big rotation. We're three 0 up. It's not like it matters if we lose against Real Madrid. Um, even though I would like bragging rights, that'd be quite funny. So I think we'll leave it at that. Danny Simpson can come on for Mika Richards. Why not? Actually, no, I want to leave Micah Richards on. I want him to get up. So, we're going to be bringing on Sato Barahino, Gray, Wellington Silva, 
There's no way I can bring on Sammy Amiobi. No, I'd rather bring on Gray. So bringing on Barahino, Gray, Matty James, Wellington Silver, Huth, and Danny Simpson. We're 3-0 up just before the 65th minute. And we'll give everyone a bit of a rotation. Maybe Sato Barahino can get us a goal. But because we've completely sort of mixed up the chemistry and the structure of the side, it, it might not be uh, likely. Okay, looks like they've brought on Navas in goal. Tony Cruz finds Ozil. Fakir breaks away, but we managed to close it down. Nanny finds the head of Danny Simpson, and Vazquez determined to get on the score sheet for Real Madrid. Wellington Silva offside. We're still 3 0 up against Real Madrid. Danny Simpson with the throw in finds Remy. Sato Barahino rises to the occasion, but couldn't apply the header in the back of the net, and Remy makes it 4 0 against Real Madrid. Oh my god, in Sergio Ramos's testimonial testimonial match sends a message, which is awesome. Right, can I bring off Marcus Rojo or Fuchs? There must be someone for them. Um Yeah, I'm gonna bring Daniel Amati down for Rojo. And we'll we'll chuck on Sammy Amiobi, Sammy Amiobi in the midfield, even though he's not really suited for it. There's only, hang on, there's only ten minutes left. We'll rotate everyone, bugger it, even if they're out of position. So we'll take off Remy. We'll bring on Joseph Dodu. Give everyone a bit of run into the side. Mark Brighton. Where who hasn't come off? Um, we'll bring on Mark Schwartz for Schmeichel as well. I think that's pretty much it. We need to leave one centre back on. Huth has come on. Fuchs. We'll bring Mark Albrighton for Hooks. Fuchs. Right, let's leave it at that. Do a full rotation. We'll leave Daniel Marty on. Just to give everyone ten minutes, of, seven minutes of game time, bugger it. Wellington Silva on the ball. Can we make it 5 0? Oh, gets tackled. But who would have thought? Being released by Arsenal now gets to play in the testimonial match for Sergio Ramos. Mark Schwartz with a clean cut save there. But it looks like we're going to hold the clean sheet. We'll just have to, to see. Kovacic whips it in to Ozil. Gets blocked. Wellington Silva on the counter-attack. Barahino. Oh, my God. A little bit of a crash collision, a collision there, but Gray manages to pick it up. Guys, I don't believe it. We managed to win 4-0 over Real Madrid. Schlup, Vardy, Mares, and Remy getting up on the score sheet. And, uh, wow. Real Madrid honors Ramos. My God. Does he? Does he really honor them? <laughs> I don't know about that. Right, so we have the Community Shield against Arsenal. We'll skip it because I don't care about it, neither does the board. And we'll play the match against West Ham uh, in today's episode as well later on. So I'll see you guys t yeah, against the match against West Ham. Okay, guys, welcome back to the match against West Ham. We managed to win 3-2 over Arsenal, um, winning by the smallest of margins, as we have done um, a lot of last season. The only way we manage to win is that we can score more than what the other team can. So we concede a lot of goals, but um, which we don't have the strongest backline. Obviously, Wes Morgan and Fuchs are getting older. We we did bring in Marcus Rojo and uh, Richard Smy uh, uh, Mika Richards. Schmeichel is a, an okay goalkeeper, 29 years of age, 20 million, but we've got to pr prioritize in uh, other positions. Now, I've just realized off camera that the reason why Ozil uh, was playing for Real Madrid is that he went back to play a testimonial match for Sergio Ramos. Now, I didn't know that was possible. I don't know why he would do that. Do you think... Well, maybe he did it in real life. I have no idea. But I, would, I wouldn't I would think that Arsenal would let him put the Real Madrid kit back on. Or maybe they weren't wearing it. But uh, regardless, let's get into the match against West Ham here today. The first match of the Premier League. We're coming off red hot. We're coming off the, the red hot press with two victories. A 4-0 victory over Real Madrid and a 3-2 a victory over Arsenal. Now, unfortunately, as you see here, it's the 13th of August. 
And Gulo Kante doesn't come back to the 21st, so he's going to miss out the first match of the season against West Ham and Sheffield Wednesday. Luckily for me, it's not really anyone that crucial, as in the top four. But uh, yeah, I'm befuddled as to why Angulo Kante would want to go out on international duty with Mali. Not just the professional team, the under-23s. Um, I don't know why, but 68 million, 25 years of age is the key cog in the midfield alongside Drinkwater. However, we do have a pretty good replacement in Daniel Amati, sort of a younger Angulo Kante, very much similar stats. Um, I wonder if we can compare him. Yeah, let's sort of compare him. Oh, maybe not so much. They're still, they're both valued a hell of a lot. Oh, Daniel Marty's a little bit taller. Maybe not as much as I would have thought, but I do see them playing sort of a similar role. He's more of a, yeah, he's more of a box to box to box, and Daniel Marty's a lot more defensive. But regardless, Daniel Marty's going to be playing. So we're going to be playing a 4 4 2. Vardy, Remy leading the line, Schlup, Amati, Drinkwater, Mares, Fuchs, Rojo, Morgan, and Mika Richards, and Schmeichel in goal. Uh, Sato Barahino coming off the bench, maybe Wellington, Silver, and Gray. We'll see. We have Danny Simpson, Huth, and Matty James, Joseph Dodu, Al Brighton, Sammy Amiobi, Jack Barmy's gone back to the under 21s, and Kante isn't here. So that's pretty much it. Still got seven million in the bank. Oh, there was another uh, Everton have a new manager, Eddie Howe jump ship at Bournemouth, which I'm surprised about. But he's gone to join Everton, and Bournemouth uh, don't have a manager now. <laughs> so let's get into the match against Chelsea here today. We have four substitutes outside the match. Yeah, it's fine, right? No matter. But it's going to be interesting to see who West Ham play today. Um, it's difficult to think. Leicester. Okay, West Ham 11 to 5, draw 11 to 5. Okay, right, so let's get into the match against West Ham here today. They are playing a 4 4 1 1. Valencia leading the line. Payet, uh, who else to sort of take note of? Reed, Tompkins. Yeah, an alright side. No Andy Carroll or anything, but let's play the match in today's episode. We're going to play in the 4 4 2. If we manage to get a goal. We might park the bus and, well, I say that, we'll use Jose Mourinho's defensive formation. But Remy playing it over the top to Jamie Vardy. I could see what you're trying to do, but the the cross was a little bit mistimed with the overhead through ball. Schmeichel lobs it out to Mikko Richards and he bombs it up the pitch. A lot of heading here. Vardy trying to play through Remy. Plays it over the top to Schlup. Schlup finds Remy! And Remy is unfortunately offside on the fourth minute. And it's still currently nil-nil against West Ham. Come on, Leicester. We can bring one back. Or we can not one back. Put one in. Uh, okay. Right. It says we dropped down to fifth, but it's the first match of the season. Who cares? Uh, as you might have seen in the top left before I start, Arsenal actually lost uh, against Manchester City in the first match. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I said the other way around. Manchester City lost against Arsenal. Pep Guardiola lost his first match of uh, the Premier League. So it's currently nil-nil against Leicester. Okay, Tompkins has had an injury. Remy capitalizes on the injury and scores his first goal of the season for Leicester. My God, picked him up for 19 million when Chelsea uh, put him up for sale. That's insane. From the corner kick, Remy capitalizes. I'm not going to do any substitutions. We're 1-0 up. Um, we might bring Barahino on later. We'll just depend how uh, Remy's fitness, his condition is going, and obviously determining the, the player's stats. Right. So 1-0 against West Ham. From the corner kick again, drink water. Amati finds Schlup. Mares makes it 2-0. Good job, Mares. The Algerian scores his first goal of the season. And we're tuning up against West Ham. Let me know in the comment section down below, guys. How do you think I'm going to do in the Champions League? I honestly don't know how we're going to do. If we can get into the knockout round, I'll be happy. I think that's a pretty good success if we can get out of the group. Schlup. Remy makes it 3-0. And we're 3-0 up against West Ham. What a way to start off the season. And now on that note, it's time to bring on some substitutions. Let's bring on Sato Barahino. Um... 
I want to keep on going. I want to keep on winning. I want to try to put as many goals past them. Now, I did say that I was going to go by condition, but Seenings, um Remy... Uh, Seedings Jamie Vardy plays a defensive forward. We can always chuck Jamie... Yeah, we can always change that. No, let's bring off Jamie Vardy for Sato Barahino. And we'll make Sato Barahino the advanced forward. Uh, we'll play, put him as an advanced forward. And we'll chuck Remy as the complete. But Remy is for... No, nah, I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind. Don't do that. Remy's got 74 condition. He's on a yellow. Let's bring him off. We can't afford to lose him. I don't know why he would... Um, get a a red but um let's bring on we can bring on gray who plays on the left or we can bring on wellington silver i really do like wellington silver though but gray is just that little bit younger let's bring on gray for schlup and let's bring on maddie james for how can we sort of tweak this i'm going to bring on huth for wes morgan because I don't want him to get too knackered. Because I ideally would like another centre-back. Because Wes Morgan and Huth are getting a little bit past it. Um, but Schlup breaks away here. We can always invert um, Miko Richards to a centre-back. Because he or he can play there quite comfortably. So we're 3-0 up against West Ham. Barahino goes for it but doesn't put it out. A West Ham counter-attack here started by... Well, I don't know if it was started by, but Cresswell was pretty influential in that. We've had our three substitutes. Maybe Gray, Sato Barahino, or Hoof. Sato Barahino is offside. Will he get a late winner on his debut? We will just have to see. But I will try to give Barahino as much game time as possible because he is, well, hopefully the future of the club. Coming to the dying minutes of the match and the episode... One last, nope, that's it. A 3-0 over, a victory over West Ham. Remy, Mares, and Jamie Vardy scoring, and we're currently sitting in second, but it's early days, it doesn't really matter. Drink water, cream of the crop. Nicely done, and we did that without Kante. We'll be back after the match against Sheffield Wednesday. But that's pretty much it. Not really much else I need to recap for this episode. It's time to end it here. Thank you very much for watching. If this video can get 150 likes within 24 hours, I will do a double upload here today and release the second video instantly. But guys, check out my social media links if you haven't already. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram all in the description below. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And stay tuned for more content on my channel. Let me know in the comment section down below your predictions for the series. Um, if we can make top four, get Champions League football, I'll be happy. But because we have European football, we might be a little bit stretched. If we can get to the knockout round, that's probably respectable. If we can get out of the group and get to the knockout round, uh, I'll be happy. We might be able to get past the round of 16 if we get a favourable draw. But we'll just have to see. Mind you, we did finish in first, so we get a better seed. But uh, regardless, my name has been Simsy. Goodbye.